Hi there, this is David, and uh, I feel like I just did a new RPG news video, but so many new things have been announced, and I'm just here to talk about those things. We have some Chained Echoes news, some Ass Libra news, more Baby Man Battle Network news, and massive, massive ease announcements. We're going to start with Chained Echoes, which seems to be the RPG du jour these days, and I kind of think that I might have a little bit to do with that, just saying. So, <laughs> it's a great game. It's a great game. It's, it's fantastic. Anyway, there are physical editions out there that you can order from First Press Games. Before we get started going over these physical editions, though, let me tell you, I have heard horror stories about First Press Games. Like, so much so that it doesn't take weeks for these games to come. It doesn't take months for these games to come. It can actually take years for these games to come. So, be wary. That being said, there are some physical editions that you can order. These are all in pounds, it looks like, and they range in price from 42 pounds up to 300 pounds. So yeah, there is um, quite a bit of variety here. So let's look at the cheapest one right here. This one, it is the PC version. It comes with a little PC box, an instruction manual right there. Um, let's see, what else it says? It has a full world map, a little collectible coin, and this slip case. So it's actually, you get quite a bit of stuff just for the 42 pounds right here. Um, if you're gonna go up a notch, let's say that you wanted to get this one. Let's not look at PC. Let's look at this one for the Switch. This one's $50, so just a little tiny bit more. It's basically the same stuff that you got for the PC version, except it's for the Switch. Um, so you do get a console release there physically. This one's kind of cute. For £68, you get it in like a Super Nintendo box, but it's called the Super Retro box right there. So that's kind of cool gotta say it comes with a poster as well uh let's look back let's look at some of the more expensive ones this one here is sold out for the switch but the same thing is available and not sold out for the ps4 this is the ps4 super collectors edition and my gosh does it come with some stuff here physical ps4 disc with this extensive full color manual different collectible coins, a double CD soundtrack set, a silver necklace with a gemstone pendant, a hardcover art book, this clear file, a double-sided poster and world map, this massive box, and a wooden music box. Like, this is a lot. This is a lot. But also, I mean, it costs a lot, too. Like, my gosh. $300 for these collector's editions. Good lord. They have just like the soundtrack right over here. Retro editions. This one's kind of middle of the road right here. This is the Switch one for $90. Um, what, what in the world? So for $90, you pretty much get everything that you would get. Like, literally. For $90, you pretty much get everything that you would get for the $300 edition. Except for that wooden music box and that necklace. Are you telling me that a wooden music box and a necklace are worth two hundred frickin' dollars? I don't think so. That's just me. Anyway, I am just letting y'all know that this game is fantastic and there are physical editions available. <laughs> this one is kind of ridiculous. I can't believe that that one sold out for a necklace and a music box, but hey, whatever, some people. From our favorite producer of JRPGs comes Fairy Fencer F. Yeah, this is from Idea Factory, I know. I have heard good things about Fairy Fencer F, though. This is a sequel to that game. Fairy Fencer F Refrain Chord is coming west this spring. It already launched in September in Japan. It's going to be coming over here to the west for the PC, the PS4, the PS5, and the Nintendo Switch. There are some physical editions that you can pre-order um, from their online store. It says here that it takes place after the events of Fairy Fencer F, and it sees Fang and his allies encountering Gla Great Glace and Floor, muses who are able to use the power of song to boost and alter other people's abilities, among other things. The game uses a tactical combat system which makes use of elevation difference and character direction, as well as the previous titled Foray's system. 
I am not a fan of Idea Factory for the most part. I am not a fan of games like these, um, Neptunia-ish games, but I know that some of you guys out there are, so I'm biting the bullet and I am letting you know that this exists. About a week ago or so, I heard about this game, Ass Libra Revision, and I made a review of the demo of it because, you know, it has, has, has an option on the title screen. And it says, play the demo or play the full game. And I'm like, well, I'm playing the demo. And the demo lasted 30 minutes. Little did I know that if you click full game that there's more to it. But anyway, um, this was billed as kind of like a Metroidvania meets Final Fantasy um, sort of thing. And it's got great reviews. And I did enjoy what I played of the demo. Um, anyway, coming to Switch... Um, next year, there is some new DLC for this game, um, and with that DLC come some other quality of life improvements as well. They're going to be revising the English translation, they're going to put out some Steam collectible cards, um, all sorts of other stuff right there. So, that's pretty neat. Um, I, I wanted to talk about this, number one, because I made the video about the demo, even though it's not my fault. It's not my fault. They, they literally put play the demo. So I played the demo and then it had the full game thing. And I was like, well, I don't want to play the full game. And I, fe I, felt, I felt like if I clicked the full game thing, that it would take me to a pay thing. And I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. So I didn't even click it. Why? This is, this is me just ranting and raving in a, in a news video, but hey, it is what it is. Why are you going to put stuff that's in a demo into something that's called full game and not under the thing that's called demo? It doesn't make sense to me. Why? 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 I was like schooled in the comments section over this review. If you want to look at some comments, go look at that um, review video that I did. But anyway, I figured, you know, mea culpa, here we are. Uh, we have some DLC for this pretty cool game. Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection is launching April 14th of next year. Has online capabilities too, so you can battle your friends um, through like the Switch Online and all that kind of cool stuff. So that's pretty neat. It says here that the PlayStation 4 and Switch versions will be available both physically and digitally for $59.99 or as two separate volumes digitally for $39.99. I don't know why you would buy it as two separate volumes and end up spending $80 or if you could just buy them both for $60, but hey, whatever. Um, it has all 10, all 10 mainline Mega Man Battle Network titles, complete with previously exclusive battle chips and the long-awaited net battles that you can enjoy alongside friends and other players worldwide. So even some exclusive Japanese stuff is now um, included in this version. It says here, players can even download rare battle chips that were previously available primarily at promotional events only in Japan. There's pre-order bonuses as well. Let's see. Um, the Mega Man, where, where is it? Uh, I saw it earlier. Uh, oh, there it is. Two brand new skins. The Hubstop for Volume 1 and the Dark Man Mega Man for Volume 2. There's also four new special arrangements of original music as well. That's pretty cool. Um, then these are the games that are actually available. You have Mega Man Battle Network 1 and 2, and then you have like the dual versions of each one. This is a very Pokemon sort of thing, where 3 is white and blue, 4 is red sun and blue moon. So whenever you think it's 10 games, it's really kind of 6 games. Um, just saying, there's a music player, a gallery, there's filters which you can turn on or turn off. So, if you haven't had a chance yet to play these uh, Game Boy Advance games, now is definitely the time to dive in. Remember that NVIDIA leak from, like, I don't know, maybe a year ago or so? That leak that basically said that, hey, all these really cool games are going to be coming out, and everybody was like, no, they're not. There's no way that all these games are going to come out. Then, lo and behold, all those games came out. Except for a remake of Final Fantasy IX. But here I am, trolling the bowels of the Instagram, and the official Final Fantasy account has shared something in regards to Final Fantasy IX. 
I wonder why. Yeah, maybe we're gonna get that announcement of the Final Fantasy IX Remake! This is not a remaster! Don't get it twisted! This one was leaked to be a full remake! Hell yeah! This is my favorite Final Fantasy of like all the Final Fantasies. I love this game and I cannot, cannot, cannot wait. And I hope and I pray that this is actually leading to that official announcement. Now for the news that you've all been waiting for that I've been waiting for with bated breath since it was first announced about a month ago or so. Ease 10 Nordics is announced for the PS5, PS4, and Switch. It's due out next year in Japan. We heard a little bit about this um, about a month ago or so um, with Falcom saying, hey, they want to do something for, the thir for its 35th anniversary, but they weren't able to. So now we are getting the 10th game in the series. I love the E series, and this is going into a new area, the Nordic countries. You know, E is kind of based on our world. Like, Asteria is England, the Roman Empire is, you know, Italy, Rome. Uh, Salceta is like Spain, so the Nordics is obviously those Scandinavian countries up there. So it says, the settings in the northern sea, Obelia Bay, which is made up of countless islands, big and small. After completing his adventures in the ancient kingdom of Ease, young adventurer Adolf Christian encounters a maritime people known as the Normans in this new land. Who are they? And who are the Griegers, immortal undead, who attack humans? So the battle system used up till Ease 9 has been dr drastically revamped. Now we have a new cross-action system, which allows players to fight using two modes according to the situation. We have the speedy solo mode, where the player controls one character with the help of automatic attacks and support from the, com with the uh, from the partner. In combination mode, the player can simultaneously control a series of actions for both characters to take on formidable foes in back and forth combat. Then, hysterically, it says, additionally, Ease 10 allows you to control a ship for the first time in the series. Explore vast oceans using sea maps as your guide and engage in naval battles against enemy ships in this new feature that adds a joy to the adventure. So that is so funny because if you know anything about the E series, every single time Adol boards a ship, it crashes. He, it, it, it's almost like he gets the Titanic every single time that he, you know, boards a ship. He is constantly, um, just downing these things so i think it's so funny how they're like hey let's you know put eight all on board a ship and let's hope that he doesn't crash land on a new you know island <laughs> but we got another announcement too E's memoir the oath in Falgana, has been announced for switch it is due out in spring of next year in japan so basically what this is, this is a high definition remaster of Ease, Oath, and Falgana. This is the third game in the series. This is my copy. I know it's in that crummy GameStop case, but it is what it is. Um, so we have a high definition remaster of the game coming out on the Switch. Um, if you've already played Ease 3 on the PSP, or it's even on Steam too, there's pretty much not much new here. Um, the release on the PSP was fantastic, and it included so much voice acting. They had extra stuff in their budget, so they were able to voice things that they weren't um, normally able to voice. So now it says more fully voiced event scenes, including the long-awaited additions of voiceovers for Adol, which is shocking because normally he's silent. We have refined versions of illustrations for every character that appears during the story but as well as classic versions will be included. So you can choose between which version that you would like to see. We've remastered graphics and sounds um, as, you know, normal. But to me, looking at this, and this is a video of the PSP version above me, it looks the same. And it's also over on Steam as well. So it's kind of like, why? You know, this is kind of like my Tales of Symphonia thing where they're remastering that again, and it's like, it's already on Steam, and it's for $5 on Steam. Why? Yeah, you know, it's just why? Anyway, uh, we have an additional soundtrack that you can choose from for the original version, the PSP version, this remastered version, 
So, yeah, oh, this is super cute with a doll and do oh my gosh, I could just squeeze them. They're so cute. I love this little art style. There's a high speed mode and beginner friendly support features. So you can increase your speed while moving on the field by 1.5 times. That's kind of nice. Um, then it says that it's equipped with various support features for beginners such as not falling which allows you to recover instantly without taking damage if you fall from a high place. Me personally, I probably won't be buying this, except maybe physically just to kind of complete up the collection, because um, I've already played this. You know, I played it back on the SNES, and then I played it on the PSP as well, and it's like, this is just the same thing, so yeah. Anyway, this is exciting, exciting news, especially that Ease 10 announcement. What do y'all think about all this news that's been announced? I'm trying desperately to keep up. Let me know in the comments, and as always, have a good day.